Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Avid Bioservices Second Quarter Fiscal 2022 Financial Results Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session, and instructions will follow at that time. As a reminder, this conference call may be recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Tim Bronz of Avid's Investor Relations Group. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. On today's call, we have Nick Green, President and CEO, Dan Hart, Chief Financial Officer, and Matt Quitniak, AVID's Chief Commercial Officer. Today, we will be providing an overview of AVID Bioservices' contract development and manufacturing business, including updates on corporate activities and financial results for the quarter ended October 31st, 2021. After our prepared remarks, we will welcome your questions. Before we begin, I'd like to caution that comments made during this conference call today, December 7, 2021, will contain certain forward-looking statements within the meaning of the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995 concerning the current belief of the company, which involves a number of assumptions, risks, and uncertainties. Actual results could differ from these statements, and the company undertakes no obligation to revise or update any statement made today. I encourage you to review all of the company's filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission concerning these and other matters. Our earnings press release and this call will include discussion of certain non-GAAP information. You can find our earnings press release, including relevant non-GAAP reconciliations, on our corporate website at avidbio.com. With that, I will turn the call over to Nick Green, AVID's President and CEO. Thank you, Tim, and thank you to everyone who has dialed in and to those participating today via webcast. I am pleased to announce another strong quarter at AVID. Beginning with our financial results, for the sixth quarter in a row, we have recorded an increase in revenues compared to the prior year period. On the new business front, Our team signed numerous new clients and new orders, further strengthening our pipeline. Finally, with respect to operations, the company successfully completed its annual maintenance shutdowns and broke ground on the Myford South construction. Most significantly, the company recently announced its expansion into viral vector development and the manufacturing services for cell and gene therapy products. We believe this area offers significant opportunity for growth and we are very excited to begin offering services to this sector. Before I turn the call over to Dan for a review of the financial results, I would first like to welcome Matt, AVID's new Chief Commercial Officer, to the call. Matt is an accomplished senior global sales executive with a proven track record of driving revenue growth. In his new role, he will be responsible for the continuing growth of AVID's business through the ongoing expansion of the company's commercial and clinical client base. We are extremely pleased to have Matt join our team and we look forward to working with him. Matt and I will provide additional details on business development and operations for the period following an overview of our second quarter financial results. And for that, I'll turn the call over to Dan. Thank you, Nick. Before I begin, in addition to the brief financial overview I'll provide on the call today, additional details on our second quarter financial results are included in our press release issued prior to this call and in our Form 10-Q, which was filed today with the SEC. I'll now provide an overview of our financial results from operations for the quarter and six months ended October 31, 2021. Revenues for the second quarter of fiscal 2022 were $26.1 million, representing a 24% increase compared to $21.1 million recorded in the prior year period. The increase in revenues can primarily be attributable to fees received from a customer during the current year period for unutilized reserve capacity, combined with an increase in our process development revenues, primarily associated with services provided to new customers. For the first six months of fiscal 2022, Revenues were $56.9 million, a 22% increase compared to $46.5 million in the prior year period. The increase in revenues for the first six months of fiscal 2022 can primarily be attributable to an increase in fees received from customers for unutilized reserve capacity 
combined with an increase in process development revenues primarily associated with services provided to new customers. Gross margin for the second quarter of fiscal 22 was 35%, compared to a gross margin of 30% for the second quarter of fiscal 2021. Gross margin for the first six months of fiscal 22 was 36%, compared to 32% for the prior year period. The increases in gross margin for the quarter and the first six months were primarily from higher manufacturing and process development revenues during these periods. While we are pleased to report these improvements in gross margin compared to prior years, we do expect to increase hiring in the coming months to support our growing manufacturing capacity and our new viral vector business, and this may impact margins in future quarters. Total SG&A expenses for the second quarter of fiscal 22 were $5 million, an increase of 21% compared to $4.2 million recorded for the second quarter of fiscal 21. For the first six months of fiscal 22, SG&A expenses were $9.5 million as compared to $8 million for the prior year period. The increase in SG&A during the quarter in the first six months was primarily due to increases in stock-based compensation, facility and related expenses, advertising costs, partially offset by a decrease in payroll and benefit-related costs. For the second quarter of fiscal 2022, we recorded net income attributable to common stockholders of $3.5 million, or $0.06 cents per basic and diluted share, as compared to net income attributable to common stockholders of $800,000, or $0.01 cent per basic and diluted share, for the second quarter of fiscal 21. For the first six months of fiscal 2022, the company recorded a consolidated net income attributable to common stockholders of $9.8 million, or $0.16 cents and $0.15 cents per basic and diluted share, respectively, compared to a consolidated net income attributable to common stockholders of $4.5 million, or $0.08 cents per basic and diluted share for the fiscal 2021 period. The second quarter of fiscal 22 was the company's sixth consecutive quarter of operational profitability, and we are pleased to report that we achieved adjusted EBITDA of $7.6 million during the second quarter and $17.3 million for the first six months of fiscal 22. Our cash and cash equivalents on October 31st, 2021 were $163.7 million, compared to our first quarter balance of $159.7 million on July 31st, 2021, and prior fiscal year end balance of $169.9 million on April 30th, 2021. We are updating our previously announced planned capital spend for fiscal year 22 from $50 to $60 million to approximately 55 to 65 million, which now includes anticipated spend on the viral vector facility. This concludes my financial overview. I'll now turn the call over to Matt for an update on business development during the quarter. Hello, everyone. I am very pleased to be participating in my first earnings call as AVID's Chief Commercial Officer. Throughout my career, I have had the good fortune of working with many leading companies in the development and CDMO sectors, and in each role, I've been charged with driving revenue growth and building the business development teams that achieve that growth. I was eager to join Avid because I believe the opportunity to be substantial. And after my first two months on the job, I can say my, that my enthusiasm has only grown for this company. While the ongoing expansion and the company's move into viral vector manufacturing present significant opportunities for growth in the future, our current team continues to deliver solid results for our existing mammalian cell business. During the second quarter, the business development team signed new project orders totaling approximately $36 million from the new and existing customers. This work will span process development, new projects with existing customers, and additional orders for commercial products. As a result, we ended the second quarter with a backlog of approximately $120 million and expect to recognize most of that backlog over the next 12 months. We are also pleased to report that during the first six months, of fiscal 22, we have signed as many new projects from new and existing clients as we did in the whole of fiscal 21. We believe this is an early indicator of the trajectory ahead and the entire business development team is looking forward with great optimism. This concludes my overview of business development activities for the quarter. I will now turn the call back over to Nick for an update on operations and other achievements during the quarter. 
Thanks, Matt. The company made great progress in operations during the quarter. Most notably, Avid recently announced that the company was expanding its CDMO service offering into the rapidly growing cell and gene therapy market. This decision was driven by continued strong growth in this sector, combined with the CDMO industry's overall lack of proven high-quality CGMP manufacturing expertise and capacity for viral vectors. To lead the company's strategic expansion into this market, we are actively building an industry-leading team of experts with established track records of success in this field. To this end, Avid recently appointed Drew Brennan, an experienced executive from the viral vector sector of the CDMO market, to lead the company's expansion into cell and gene therapy market. Drew most recently spent more than a decade in senior commercial and operational positions at Novacep, where he was credited with driving significant growth of Novacep's U.S. CDMO services business, including the securing of several major viral vector CDMO contracts. In addition, the company recently appointed Eli Hanania as Vice President, Process Development. Eli is a seasoned life science industry executive with more than 30 years of experience in the field of cell and gene therapy. To house this new business, the company is constructing a world-class purpose-built 53,000 square feet viral vector development and GMP manufacturing facility in Costa Mesa, California, approximately five miles from Avid's existing operations in Tustin, California. Based on current projections, Avid expects the entire new facility build-out to take up to 18 months at an estimated cost of approximately $75 million. The new facility's analytical and process development laboratories are expected to come online more rapidly, with the potential to be operational during the first quarter of fiscal 23. Given Avid's strong record of quality in manufacturing, our exceptional regulatory inspection history, and our customer-centric approach to business, we believe this company is uniquely qualified to bring these values and skills to the cell and gene therapy sector and look forward to bringing this business online during fiscal year 23. I'll now provide an update on other operational achievements. As of today, the company has successfully concluded its annual maintenance shutdowns, broke ground on phase two of the Myford South expansion, and tied in the phase one expansion, which we expect to be available to operations by January 2022, as we previously communicated. And we are also scheduling clients into this space during quarter one of calendar 2022. As we've disclosed previously, we estimate that the addition of the viral vectors to the ongoing expansions will bring the company's total annual revenue generating capacity to approximately $350 million. As I hope is evident, the second quarter was highly productive and a transformative time for Avid. The company's financial status is increasingly strong, supported by year-over-year revenue growth, continued new business wins, and substantial backlog. For these reasons, we believe we remain on track to achieve our stated full-year 22 revenue guidance of between $115 and $117 million. Our business development team continues to perform, signing $36 million in new business during the quarter and ending the period with a backlog of $120 million. And under the new leadership of Matt, we believe our new business opportunities will only grow. Leveraging the company's operational strengths, we are pleased to expand our service offerings into the cell and gene therapy market, and we are confident in our ability to establish an industry-leading viral vector CDMO business, and we are actively building the team and facilities that we believe will drive our success and expand our revenue generating capacity. Also during the quarter, we are pleased to have our progress as measured in the value created for shareholders recognized as the company's stock was named for the first time to the S&P Small Cap 600 Index. We are honored to join this index and we believe it speaks to the collective effort of everyone at Avid while building greater visibility for the company with investors and the industry alike. We are pleased with our progress, and we believe that each of our accomplishments during the quarter will facilitate the growth and move us towards our overarching goal of establishing Avid 
as a best-in-class CDMO focused on biologics. This concludes my prepared remarks for today, and we can now open the call for questions. Operator? Certainly. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question at this time, please press star than one on your touchtone telephone. If your question has been answered and you'd like to remove yourself from the queue, please press the pound key. Our first question comes from the line of Sean Dodge from RBC Capital Markets. Your question, please. Yep, thanks. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, and congratulations on the, the success of the new business wins. Um, Nick or, or, or Matt, you, you touched on it a, a bit in your prepared remarks, but can you talk a little bit more about the, the broader demand environment? Are, are, you, are you seeing any noise from supply chain uh, challenges? And then maybe with the, um, the, the, the backlog and then the, the visibility you may have through your sales pipeline, can you just give us some kind of idea of how quickly you think you can fill uh, the incremental capacity that will be coming online in the next uh, couple of months here? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, with a strong backlog already uh, and, and positive uh, growth with our uh, issuance in the last few months, uh, I think that uh, we're going to remain on track for continued growth. Okay. Um, and, and then maybe I, I guess on the, the forward uh, margin trajectory, th there's a, a couple of different dynamics that will be affecting you over the, the coming quarters. Dan, you mentioned uh, increasing hiring soon, but you also have this new space opening up and, and generating revenue. Is there any uh, general direction you can give us on, on how we should be thinking about the trajectory of margins over the next year, year and a half? Yeah, I, th I think I'll, uh, I'll firm up, Sean, with, with what I've said in the past, that uh, with the current installed capacity, we should see a gross margin that's roughly 30% plus or minus, depending on mix. Uh, moving into the first phase and second phase, for that matter, of the mammalian expansion, we should see a, a good positive um, um, 50 to 70 percent or so margin expansion. Um, but that's fully dependent on the mix that comes through, the timing of the revenues and filling that first phase and second phase and, uh, you know, onboarding the cost. So in general, we should see continued growth as the top line increases. But, uh, you know, just to point out in the near term, we'll have, uh, you know, based on mix and the cost associated with bringing on the new facilities and absorbing the depreciation and other uh, costs, including uh, personnel costs, uh, could uh, impact how quick it expands. Okay, and then just to follow on to that, the, the cell and gene therapy expansion, uh, how quickly will you be hiring to begin to, to staff that? Are those kind of more GNA additions at this point, and, and then we'll start to get to kind of more of the facility-specific people, or, or will those happen, uh, I guess, soon? Yeah, so uh, Sean Snick speaking. Uh, I mean, I think it's a, uh, a mixture, to be frank with you. We uh, Some of the first people we're bringing in, we've already got people in engineering, uh, obviously, and uh, um, we've obviously got Ellie in the, on the uh, R&D side, but we also were looking at bringing in operational people, uh, quality people. We've got to build the quality systems and everything else ahead of, uh, ahead of opening up manufacturing. But I think you're probably going to see more in the... Uh, in the development side of the business as we bring new clients initially into development and then move them into GMP and that's the way we're bringing the facilities online. So we're bringing the development hopefully in quarter one of fiscal 23 um, and then obviously uh, we said the GMP completion is about an 18 month program so that will be somewhat later on after that. Okay, uh, super helpful. Uh, thanks and, and congratulations again. Thanks very much. Sean. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Jacob Johnson from Stevens. Your question, please. Uh, hey, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, first, just because I'm getting a number of questions on it, just to get out of the way, on COVID-19, can, can you just talk about how much of your backlog today is comprised of, of COVID-19 related work? Um, yeah, I think we're uh, around 15% roughly, give or take, uh, Jacob, um, of the backlog. Okay. Uh, and then, I guess, shifting gears to, to the viral vector build-out, maybe first, Nick, uh, what kinds of viral vectors will you be manufacturing? Is it AAV, Lenti, both? And, and then also, any interest in, in getting into plasmids? 
Um, so first question on the on the vectors, um, bo both AAV and Lenti, um, LE has a, a tremendous range actually, I was, uh, I, I was shocked there were vectors that uh, I haven't even heard of to be frank with you that uh, that he's been involved with in, in his uh, 30 year history so uh, uh, not, not, not that I uh, <laughs> that I would surprise anybody but it's uh, He's, uh, he's been involved in a, a large number and a good variation, but clearly AAV and Lenti adenovirus uh, uh, are the sort of main, uh, the main throws of, uh, of the viral vector uh, market for cell and gene therapy. Um, but there will be others, I'm sure. We'll, we obviously need then, as we go along, to bring additional expertise around those to support Ellie, which we're obviously out there looking for as we speak. So, uh, but um, AAV and Lenti will certainly, uh, I think, be uh, be a key cornerstone of the business. Got it. Uh, and then just just one last follow up along the same lines. Uh, Nick, can you just remind us uh, the, the synergies that exist between you know the mammalian capacity and the viral vector business? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, we, we we still grow the cells in a mammalian cell in uh, in HEC, and more often than not, um, which is not a lot different to what we do with Cho in uh, in the mammalian cell business. So, a lot of the key fundamentals, the size of uh, reactors, the disposable technologies, the uh, unit steps, the purification, are all very uh, very common. Um, obviously, the quality systems under a biologics uh, operation as well is 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 very similar. But there are other challenges, obviously, that are, that are dissimilar. So, you know, airflows and construction of the facility are slightly different in terms of viral vectors. And obviously, we've got to do the uh, the the, the, uh, the viral component, which is why we brought people like Ellie in, because that's the the new technology that we need to uh, to add to uh, to what we already know how to do. So, uh, a lot of commonality there. Um, with respect to your comment regarding plasmids, I mean, I think that obviously is an interesting field. Um, every uh, viral vector that uh, requires a plasmid or two or three, um, and so that, you know, that clearly is an area that uh, there could be a potential interest uh, going forward, as I think we probably highlighted uh, sometime in the past. But uh, right at this moment in time, we've... Uh, we, we, we've got a few things that we're uh, we're occupied with getting up and running, so uh, not right at this minute. Perfect. I'll leave it there. Thanks for taking the questions, Nick. Thanks very much, Jacob. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Matt Hewitt from Craig Hallam Capital. Your question, please. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Congratulations on all the progress. Um, maybe the first one regarding um, regarding the first phase at Myford. Now that that's complete, I think early on there was the, the potential um, that that if that was completed on time, that there, there could be as much as 12 million of upside to your guidance for the year. Um, if I'm reading the press release um, correctly, it sounds like that'll be dependent upon. Um, validation, and I'm just curious what you know. What could delay that validation and and push that into Um, I, I don't anticipate there being much in terms of validation that would cause us not to be able to do that, to be frank. So um, I think the major major issue for us was getting to where we are now, coming out of shutdown and having tied it into the existing operations, which we've done all of that. Um, so fundamentally, it's mechanically complete. Um, so the, I guess the, the you know the main thing is is the upside and in, into is where you're getting at uh, regarding the. Uh, the forecast, um, and, and, and it remains the same as it was before. Yes, there is. Now we've got it on site. Obviously, we can leverage that, but we've got to have it. Op we have, you know, we are, it has to be operational before you can book people in. We are already starting booking people in. In. Uh,
if Matt continues to add to that, um, and some of it we can squeeze into this year, then if our capacity is 120 and it hits 125, then we've got uh, we've got some additional uh, revenue opportunities there. So, uh, you know, kind of let it, let's get Christmas out of the way, um, have everything up and running, and then obviously we'll we'll, we'll obviously be driving to do as much as we can. Um, but at the moment, you know, our guidance remains the, the sort of 115, 117 mark. Uh, and we'll, we'll work really hard in the new year to try to see if we can find any opportunity to improve it if it's possible. If it's possible. That, that's great, and thank you for the color there. Um, shifting gears a little bit regarding the, the new viral vector um, opportunity, I, I would assume at this point you've had an opportunity to check with existing customers that are developing cell and gene therapies in addition to maybe um, th their traditional large molecule um Products and I'm curious if there is any overlap there, and and if those are the low hanging fruit of the existing you know customer base um, that could come in earlier or quickly um, once that new facility is up and ready to go. Yeah, I mean, I think I would say that it's probably not just about going around our new uh, our existing customers and and the like. Obviously, those would be people that we would go out to and talk to. Uh, but to be very frank, the, the main thrust of the, uh, of the focus at the moment is making sure we bring the right level of expertise in, getting the construction and the design absolutely nailed on, moving that forward as fast as we can, um, and, and then, you know, putting a quality system in again. We, we, we're here to do this right. That's kind of one of the fundamentals of our business is, is quality first um and making sure that we have a have a real world class facility well equipped with the right level of competence um i think the you know the the customer side of it is always a, a challenge in bringing new business in but we we feel that you know with that with those things in place that we'll be able to uh to to attract the attention that we need to the facility understood all right thank you very much thank you our next question comes from the line of Paul Knight from KeyBank. Your question, please. Hey, Dan. Now, what was the uh, contract fees uh, in the quarter just posted? I, I'm sorry. Could you repeat that question, Paul? Effectively. I'm sorry, Paul. Uh, could you repeat that question for me? Sorry. Uh, a certain part of the revenue is from... Uh, Manufacturing not performed, but still a charge, uh, a, a revenue recognition. Uh, what was that, was that level in the quarter? Uh, that number was uh, roughly uh, $5 million during the quarter. Okay. And then uh, the... Uh, the COVID is out 15% of backlog. Is that is that where you know you're getting the most non uh, recognition of non manufacturing revenue? No, most of the non manufacturing revenue is coming just from the the PD side of the house, which is you know the entry point into the the mammalian side. Uh, new programs come in and have the, the PD side, tech transfer, what have you, analytical before it gets to CGMP. Okay. And then that $5 million, what was that, a year ago? A year ago, it was the 3.1. Okay. Thanks. And then uh, on the uh, cell and gene therapy expansion, how many square feet did you mention, Nick? Uh, 54,000 square feet, uh, Paul. And... Uh, you know, seventy-five million at capex. Um, what do you think that that you're kind of implying about what a hundred and about two about eighty million of potential revenue? That is, would you view that as kind of a conservative level of of uh, revenue out of a facility of that size? Um, it'll depend on mix, obviously, and uh, and, and capacity utilization. But I think uh, it, it, it's one where a little early for me to be to be absolutely frank on whether we could squeeze more out of it until we start getting it operational and and see the opportunities. But I, I would be surprised if it was any less for sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to hand the call back to Nick Green for any closing remarks. Uh, thank you, operator, and uh, and thank you to everyone participating on today's call. Uh, in closing, I'd just like to thank Avid's customers 
partners and investors for their ongoing collaboration. And as always, I'd like to acknowledge Avid's extraordinary employees who together are driving the continued uh, company success. Uh, thank you again for participating on the call today and for your continued support of Avid Bioservices. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your participation in today's conference. This does conclude the program. You may now disconnect. Good day.